Kurt Busch, the driver of the number 41 Monster Energy Ford, was gracious enough to come in and talk to us. So, Kurt, just want to start off with how cool is it to run Monster Energy in the Monster Energy All-Star Race? Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite the event. Uh, over the years, the All-Star Race has always built that fun, excitement, and that different feel when you come to Charlotte Motor Speedway. So whether it's uh, you know pre-race, you know, or it's the the open, or then the the final uh, Monster Energy All Star Race, there's so much to see, absorb, and and feel that's different than normal race weekends. And so this year at Charlotte, what makes it fun is you have you know the All Star Race with its rules package. You have the 600 with a standard NASCAR style car and package. And then when we come back here for the playoffs in September, uh, it's the Roval. And so three unique tickets all the way around at Charlotte. Uh, you can't get that at any other track. And so it's really a fun time for Charlotte. I just wanted to congratulate you know, Marcus Smith and everybody at SMI on what they're doing to move the needle. And, you know, with Monsters involvement in the All-Star Race, I always feel compelled to, you know, promote it as best I can. And we've had commercials, we've had appearances, autograph sessions, and we're doing all we can to, you know, find new fans, but also take care of our old fans that, enjoy this uh you know one hot night on saturday night and you won this race in 2010 you've been top five the last three years what's just been the key to your success i think it's uh staying loose having fun with it and putting yourself in position to win it and you know to win it overall in in 2010 uh, that's when we had a, a 10 lap run at the end but it it followed a break like literally we could park on pit road we had a a 10 minute break and we actually made a shock adjustment in that race and that's that's when I you know I felt like the driver was a bit more in in control of of it the setup changes versus the engineering side and so it was great to win that and then to back it up in the 600 uh, that was a, a fun double a sweep to to be able to do that in the month of May was pretty special so just going after it having loose having fun and it was great to get out on track today that's really why I wanted to stop by and, and say hi after one lap on practice you know there's not much to talk about but this was the most excited i've been to get out on track with a new rules package in a long time just because of the preparation going into this car uh, the amount of questions in team meetings the amount of contact through my phone and emails texts calls about what do you think about this package what do you think about that package everything from shocks to transmission ratios to aerodynamic balances uh this weekend feels like a a blend of super speedway action short track action as well as a normal mile and a half uh type of speed so it, it's going to be really unique and uh, i'm glad we got the one lap on track to go wide open all the way around we were wide open uh, but i do anticipate some of the drafting challenges restart challenges and track position challenges that we see at, at, at a lot of our tracks and all of it's com you know packed into one little race right here with the monster energy all-star race all right we'll go to jenna reed then lee Hi, ap um i have two questions the first one is did you what did you learn in that one lap uh the, the cars travel didn't travel as far as we thought so we can go lower um but our simulation model said that we would run um uh, what was the lap time of 32.20? And I think we were spot on from our simulation models. Uh, and so now we know we can go a little bit quicker by lowering the car. And so that's the biggest thing. Also, um, felt like I was in third gear for six miles down the back straightaway. The, the horsepower is choked down so much that it it's a unique feel at a mile and a half to be choked down this much on power. With the idea being to create more passing, do, do you have any idea if that has been accomplished? I saw the Hendrick guys lined up to go out and do drafting practice, and we're at a mile and a half. And so I, I wish we were out on track gathering data right now. But right now, if I could just create one big topic, it, it seems like there's 10 different ways to approach one simple practice session at an all-star race. And then I have a bigger picture question. You started your career with Ford, and you're with Ford now, and Ford is doing quite well now. What are some big differences that you've seen that have gotten – forward to this position where they now maybe are the top of the manufacturers? Uh, the, the level of commitment still feels the same. Uh, Etzel Ford is very active. Uh, Henry Ford is very active. Uh, but then the immediate group underneath them 
um, now with Ford Performance, uh, the Ford Performance Group, I see it everywhere with, uh, with all their different forms of motorsport collaborating together. Whereas Ford Racing before, maybe it's just because I was younger and didn't see it all, I just felt like I was more focused on the NASCAR program and they didn't use information from IndyCar, uh, from Cosworth and Formula One or from the sports cars. What I see now is information channels that are able to communicate quickly and ga gather data from all different branches of the motorsport that Ford's involved in. Reed? I'm anticipating it. I don't know how um, active it will be with the draft. Um, but the way we approached our car uh, on the 41 uh, was, was a, an area that was slightly different than one of the other cars at Stuart Haas. And then another car at Stuart Haas went their route. We're trying to gather data as fast as we can and then be able to still zero in on what we believe is going to be the trend. So I'm, I'm anticipating pack drafting. Um, you know, this might be irrelevant, but it might be one of those comments or uh, uh, an idea that was brought up years ago by Jillian Zucker, the president of California Speedway, 10 years ago, asked me, we have to repave this track, which they still haven't. What would you think of a two-mile racetrack putting in 28 degrees of banking and running a restrictor plate race? And I said, that is a somewhat genius idea but I don't know if people will go for it. She was ahead of her time. She was ahead of the curve. Here we are at a mile and a half racetrack with a restrictor plate, trying to create a drafting style package because data shows that Talladega and Daytona are the two most appreciated races because of lead changes, position swaps, and action on track. And so we're trying it out at a mile and a half, and I think Jillian was ahead of her time a few years back. We're going to go to Lee, Mike Hembry, Mike Solarte, and then Claire. Yeah, as far as the Fords and where we were last year at Stuart Haas Racing, we were in somewhat of a... Uh, not a rebuilding mode. We were in a discovery mode on the, the balance changes with Ford, uh, the, the external side and the internal side. And now we have all those questions answered and we are pushing those Penske guys that may have been talking about how they were at a disadvantage and we've made them stronger. They've made us stronger uh, in an indirect way just with track performance. And so I feel like the aerodynamic balance is way better, the, the engine balance is better, and we've just perfected all the different categories and threw them into our, our perfect recipe. Uh, two real quick, Kurt. Um, Mike Kimber, USA Today. What do you think will be the impact if with this weather the practice is going to be limited, really limited, uh, for this new package, is that going to be major or not? We were all hoping for more uh, track time to be able to filter through the, the information uh, and the weather. Anytime it restricts you from track time, it hurts. This event is huge with the weather impact because none of us have data on what the balance is with the aero, the engines. You know, at Stuart Haas, we have cars in four directions trying to find information. You know, Hendrick was lined up to go drafting practice. Uh, the privateers were out there. I mean, I think Bubba was second quick on the board. Uh, I'm not sorry, that wasn't the right word, privateer. But, you know, a car that's all on his own, no no teammate. They, they are up there on top of the chart. So, so many different things are going to be a, a player this weekend. And now with weather, I mean, literally, I got a text on my phone that said they were condensing the practices. And we're going hot at 1130. And I'm at my house in Mooresville at 9. I'm like, I guess I should get to the track. <laughs> so a lot of things are going to be juggled this weekend. And it's fun to have, though, the, the all-star atmosphere for Monster Energy to be promoting the race and all the things they're bringing in. I just wish we didn't have the weather issue that we have to overcome. And what's your perspective with this court ruling this week 
uh, on the possibility somewhere down the road that that fans may be able to bet on races, maybe at tracks or, or maybe in every state somewhere, that good or bad for the sport? Uh, you're asking a Vegas guy that thought sports betting was legal all the time. Uh, I'm not much of a better. I grew up in that town knowing uh, they didn't build those casinos and hotels with their own money. It was built with uh, people's gambling and trying to find that edge of whatever game they were playing. And with current sports continuing to grow in all categories, football, basketball, baseball, NASCAR, I mean, there's DraftKings, there's FanDuel, there's so many ways to interact with, with sports betting. Uh, there, there's even commercials with Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, having fans going back and forth and the banter of what the energy brings uh, when two teams are going at it and yet two fandoms are going at it and as well as if you put a, a dollar down on it, you want to beat your buddy. So I don't know what impact it'll make. I don't know if we'll even feel anything different. Mike, Kurt, Mike Solarte, Spectrum News. You talked about the changes and there's maybe 10 different ways to approach this the setup of the car. But you also talked about the choking out of the speed and feeling like you're in third gear. Do you guys prefer – which which do you prefer? Do you prefer the speed aspect of the race or do you prefer the 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 tactical side of it and being able to pass guys in this package giving that opportunity to the drivers this week? Well, it, it's tough to answer your question and then appreciate what NASCAR is trying to do with this event. Um, I enjoy horsepower. I enjoy speed. Uh, these are supposed to be the toughest cars in the world to drive being that they're heavy, over-horsepowered, under-tired. You know, the aerodynamics are always lacking compared to Formula One or IndyCar, sports car. But we're trying to put on a good show. We're trying to create side-by-side -side action. And one thing that I think we need to try to address, no matter if it's a downforce race or an open race, is that the cars are just too sensitive when they're side-by-side. -side. We have to get the cars less dependent on side force. And I think that will help allow us to run side by side more aggressively. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. You follow other sports, and they're all star events, right? So we come here, and what do you see the all star race as? Because it should be an exhibition, maybe, of the talent of the drivers. Should be more fun, maybe different than other sports. They joke around a little bit, maybe do a shot they wouldn't, you know, elsewise do. Maybe officiating is lighter. I don't know. What do you see the all star race as as a competitor? Uh, it's good, lighthearted competition, but the seriousness that's involved is for the cash. It's for a million bucks, the bragging rights to say that you got the, the big check and the cool trophy at the end of it, and to know that you went up against the best of the best on who got the invite to be there. You know, there's always talk about um, in other sports that they got snubbed because they didn't get into the all-star game. And for us, you know, there's that elite 20 guys, 20 guys and girls that get into the show. And it's, I, I was sitting on the outside looking in my rookie year, and I was devastated that I wasn't in the show. I wasn't in the all-star race to go have fun and to be one of those elite guys. Can it be fun? I mean, you can't go out and joke around with the cars or, you know, try different moves because there is a million dollars on the line. Seems like every other race almost just with different rules. I mean, there is the, the extra things we do on track to, you know, pinch somebody down or push somebody in the corner, and you cross that line of, of driving a lot in the all-star race, and you hope that that talented guy, girl, catches it, and you continue on racing. But there are quite, quite a few times where there's those big wrecks, and it's because you had your guard down or you were just trying to challenge that other driver to drive a little harder, and you do those types of moves in an all-star atmosphere. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Kurt, you talk about the differences in what you're feeling. Is there anything at all from traditional Charlotte Oval racing that applies from what you felt? Uh, the shape of the track and the banking is, is there. It's that everything is, is condensed um, with, with the way the car is driving. So I just hope to get more drafting experience with, um, with the practice time and to see you know, what's going to happen. What I'm, what I'm going to say is the same as the track size, but everything is going to happen in a unique way because we're going to be drafting and in a restrictor plate type of format. And the only times we've ever been in a restrictor plate format, we're on much bigger racetracks. So everything is condensed into a tighter spot. 
Any more questions? All right, again, thanks for Kurt for taking the time to Thank come you. in to talk to us.